Hello, Gemini friends. I'm Annie Botticelli, and welcome to my Gemini November 2023 Astrology Horoscope Forecast. This is my 7-minute Astrology Highlights version of my monthly report. This is for you if Gemini is your sun sign, your moon sign, your rising sign, or any other Gemini placement you're listening for. What I'm going to talk about here is part of your astrological picture. And if you're a very late degree Gemini friend, so birthdays around June 15th through the rest of the sign, or Gemini uh, placement 23 degrees through the rest of the sign, I suggest you additionally listen to my Cancer Report as your very late degree friends will benefit from both readings. We've got very busy skies this month, a continuation of the same thing going on in October where we have a lot of mathematical connections between the stars, which means activity here on Earth. Something that's different about November compared to October, though, is that we don't have two crazy intense eclipses like we did in October. So hopefully, even though we're still in eclipse season and you may be seeing news and information continue to come in and you're integrating the new changes, um, hopefully it will be lighter and with less, un, you know, fewer unknowns and stress than September and October. So I hope that for you, there's definitely a good chance that, you know, that shift can happen. So we're going to talk about um, some general uh, highlights of the month and as they relate specifically to the Gemini chart. If you want the visuals and you're on my podcast, come on over to YouTube and find my Gemini November 2023. If you don't want to see the visuals, either scroll up on the screen so you hear me and you don't see it, or you can find my syndicated podcast pretty much anywhere. Just look for Annie Botticelli um, Astro Kisses podcast. Okay, so the life-changing, trajectory-shifting information and events that have been happening in recent months are starting to integrate, and there's a period of time between October 7th and November 25th where it's going to be easier to make decisions based on the new information that came in. If eclipse news came in in September and you were still entrenched in the, you know, Mercury retrograde, of course, Venus was still retrograde as well, it might have been a little bit hard to see what was going to come of the changes that were happening. But now here into October, now into November, you're going to have a much better idea of how the information and the events and the changes are going to manifest. So that's going to bring a little bit more of a degree of comfort and a new normal compared to the angst and the unknowns leading up to this time. There will be some intensity still this month because even though we don't have the eclipses, we still have all this Scorpio energy. We've got the Sun, Mars, Mercury, Star Goddess Ceres, and on November 13th, we've got a new moon um, at 20 degrees of uh, Scorpio. Okay, so there's a lot of energy in Scorpio, and Scorpio is that deep emotional wellspring of chaos and empowerment, you know, it runs the range of just deep everything, great and wonderful and terrible, just the darkness and the shadow and the light and the empowerment just wrapped up. So, you know, it's a time where very deep psychological patterns could be healed. And indeed, Gemini is called to do this work because the house or field of experience that this stellium, which is the word for, um, you know, three or more placements, there are three or more placements in Scorpio. So we have a stellium of Scorpio and that highlights for Gemini, the sixth house of Virgo, which is the field of experience that rules discipline. So it's being called for for you to manage your emotions, direct your emotions, get in touch with the underlying anxiety that's causing you either insomnia or dissatisfaction, and do something with it. The The difficult angle that these Scorpio placements will bring for you doesn't have to be terrible, but it will definitely be calling you to use powers of discipline and powers of developing your will as it relates to managing stress and healing on a very deep emotional level. Scorpio rules birth and death and transformation and rebirth and financial connections. And so there may be a lot of changes to your daily experience based on these types of changes that have occurred from the eclipses and that are continuing over from these storylines of the transits. You may have to attend to health matters. Things with your pets or animals may have something relevant or it may just be about you getting in a good wellness routine where you're drinking enough water and you're minding your, the air quality if you can and you're sleeping enough and you're staying away from screens at night and just whatever things you can do to manage your stress exercising. This could be a really good time to commit to and get in a good process of doing things that you know are going to be good for you and getting out the things that are bad for you. This may center around just stopping one bad habit. You know, sometimes we do a lot of cover up of adding in good things to try to make up for the fact that we're not doing 
taking away something. And sometimes the most profound health effects come from taking away something, not from adding anything in. So just kind of pay attention to that because, you know, those messages might be there. This is also a really great time for um, diagnostics, testing, and things like that, where you can get a more clear picture if you've got something medically that's happening. Um, You can get insights into what's going on and get a plan together to resolve it. We also have quite a bit of activity in Libra in a short-term and long-term way. Venus will get into Libra, um, star goddess Pallas Athena is there, and then of course in a long-term way we have transiting south node that matches the Aries Libra eclipse cycle that is in process. But all of this Libra energy highlights for Gemini the fifth house of creativity and um, you know passionate expression and creativity and fun and hobbies and true love and romance and children. So, you know, you've got a lot of sweet energy there and all of those Libra placements make a trine. So those Scorpio, you know, things were in an annoying angle, putting the pressure on for your discipline and hard work. But these planets are in a nice angle, the best angle in all of astrology. And that might just be some really nice, fun and creative bliss at this time. Very big notable point of the month, especially for Gemini's, is in the days around November 27th, we've got a full moon at almost five degrees of Gemini. So fullness, completion, fruition, drama, you know, elucidation, culmination with, you know, with anything having to do with your life, really. I mean, if your son is there, you know, it can have a lot to do with male figures in your life. Um, you know, traditionally, the, the sun related to this masculine energy. Masculine doesn't have to be gender male. You know, there could be someone that has a strong presence. But there is this this energy of if the sun is highlighted for you, of just this activation of, we'll call it, yang forces. You know, and that could relate to somebody in your life that has that energy. Or that could be related to your own inner uh, yang forces. Um, something could be going on with your physical body. Something could be going on with how you call yourself or what you are putting yourself out into as the world. There could be profound changes going on there. And, um, you know, this can also have to do with recognition and feeling more confidence in your body. Everyone will feel the intensity from that Gemini full moon, but those of you who are close to five degrees, so we'll say zero degrees to 10 degrees, the closer to five, the more intense. So that's basically all Mayborn Geminis. Um, and the closer to like the 27th or so, the more you're going to get the direct hit and elucidation and events from this uh, full moon in the days around the 27th of November. And last but not least, as these Scorpio planets, the Sun, Mercury, and Mars move from Scorpio as the month progresses, they move into Sagittarius, which is a sign that speaks your language, just like this Libra energy does. Sag, fire, and air always go famously together. This is going to continue to accentuate your me, we sector, which has been brought up so much by the eclipses in recent times. But your, you know, your partnership section is going to be very lit up by these energies. Um, and this could, you could be very busy and you have to really guard your immune system and your respiratory system. Um, because you're probably going to be in overtime, maybe through a lot of travel, um, you know, uh, surprise travel or planned travel could be through education. If you're interested in any education courses, you may find that, that, um, this month really brings that up. And October 7th through November 25th is an especially great time to commit to, you know, a course of study with you as a learner or you as a teacher. So all of this is very exciting. If you want more information about how to make the most of the energies this month, go to AnnieHelpsYou.com, put your name and email address in right there at the top and get access to my archives of my newsletters and all my new newsletters, including my mini astrology lessons and um, my links to resources to help you make the most of the starry possibilities, including my write-up of the month one month early with the sweet dates and the salty dates and the aspects to be extra careful and awareful of and good dates for doing important things, all delivered to your inbox. And if you want to learn astrology, you can also see that at AnnieHelpsYou.com. If you want to become a certified astrologer, I have an amazing comprehensive course and I can help you to do that. Or I've got a basics course if you want to start there. I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.